the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Father's Day to all fathers. Welcome everyone to Hope for the Journey, the Sunday morning broadcast here at the Pilgrim Journey Baptist Church in Henrico, Virginia. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And we are glad to have you join in with us on this Juneteenth celebration. Uh, that Juneteenth is now a federal holiday. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus, for that a bit of justice that we have received as a people in this nation. Amen. Amen and amen. Let me share with you uh, what the mission statement is of the Pilgrim Journey Baptist Church. The mission and aim of the Pilgrim Journey Baptist Church is in accordance with the Holy Scriptures undergirded by the articles of faith. We are established for the purposes of Christian education and spiritual development, spreading the word of God through evangelism and public ministry, empowering the fellowship through worship. Amen. Before we move forward, I want to share with our congregation this uh, thank you note uh, from the family of the late Martha B. Hunt. It says to the Pilgrim Journey Baptist Church family, we thank you for all the kind expressions of love and caring during the passing of our beloved mother. May God continue to bless and keep each of you in his loving arms. Sincerely, the family of Martha B. Hunt, one of the great mothers of our church. We lost just a over a week ago, a week and a half. Praise God, everybody. Again, happy Father's Day to all fathers. A special shout out uh, and moment of uh, thought for men who have lost sons and men who have lost fathers, sons who have lost fathers. Blessings be to you and the peace of God be with you as well. I call your attention today to verses of scripture found in the fifth chapter of the Gospel of John. John chapter 5, verses 19 and 20. John chapter 5, verses 19 and 20. It reads thusly, Jesus said to them, Verily I say unto you, the Son can do nothing on his own, but only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, the Son does likewise. The Father loves the Son and shows him all that he himself 
is doing, and he will show him greater works than these, so that you will be astonished. Let me repeat those verses again. Jesus said to them, Very truly I say to you, the Son can do nothing on his own, but only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, the Son does the same. The Father loves the Son and shows him all that he himself is doing. And he will show him greater works than these, so that you will be astonished. Amen. The Lord had a blessing to the reading and to the hearing of the sacred word. And with that, for this Father's Day, I want to speak on the subject like father, like son. Like father, like son. Shall we pray? Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you for another day. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for another day of life. Another day in the world, another day to get better, another day to be better, another day to do more, another day to grow closer to you. Thank you for that portion of health and strength and that we have enough right-mindedness to function throughout the day and enough sensibility to give glory, honor, and praise to your name. I thank you for this church, for this congregation, for the congregation of viewers who are watching this morning and for who contribute and participate virtually in the things that we have done in these past few months. Now, Lord, bless today Blessed today, Lord, we thank you for it, and we can come together in worship and honor your name. You are the great father, the father of fathers, and the father of children. Thank you, Lord, for being Father God today. Now bless, O oh Lord, this message, and it may give inspiration and hope to those who hear it. And more especially, be a blessing to fathers. In the name of Jesus, O oh Lord, it is that I pray. Lift up these words in your son's name. Amen. And amen. Like father, like son. You know there is something to be said about when a son images his behavior, the good qualities, from the one he calls father. It attests to the fact that the father has done a great job in teaching the son. It proves that Critical time has been spent between a father and a son. It proves that the influence of a father has been a strong enough presence with the son so that the son would not be drawn to a will that opposes the instructions of his father. It would make any father proud to hear his own son articulated things he has taught him. For like father, like son, ought to be a testimony of what it means to be in good relationship between a man and his son. Like father, like son, ought witness that it is possible to raise a son in good standing with home and community like father like son ought to be a celebrative lyric that a quality amount of time has been spent between fathers and sons like father like 
son ought to be a motto desired to be embraced that affirms the positive relationship between men and their sons. Like father, like son ought to be a welcoming slogan attesting to the fine development of young men. In the text out of the Gospel of John read under your hearing, the phrase like father, like son has been elevated to divine status. Jesus identifies his behavior and his works as imaging and being in line with the Father. However, this connection is not well received by the religious authorities of his day who are now taking action to kill him. During the feast of the Jews, Jesus went up to Jerusalem and he comes past a sheep gate for there was a pool. The area in the Hebrew tongue was called Bethesda, that is to say, having five porches. On these five porches lay a multitude of disabled people, those who were blind, lame, and paralyzed. They are there waiting for the moving of the water. For legend had it that in a certain unpredictable season, an angel would come and stir the waters of the pool and whosoever got in the pool first would be healed from their infirmity. Well, Jesus comes by the pool one day and he sees a man who had been there 38 years and he heals him. Jesus asked him, do you want to be made whole? Then rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well. He stood up, took up his bed and walked. But it was on the Sabbath day. It was on the Sabbath day. It was on church day, if you will, which made the act religiously illegal. Now, when the authorities saw that the man had been carrying his bed, they said to him, it is unlawful to carry your bed on the Sabbath. The man said, the one who healed me told me to do so. They asked him, what was the name of the man who healed you? But he didn't know Jesus' name at the time. Later on, Jesus finds him in the temple and tells him, go and sin no more, lest something worse come upon you. Then the man ran and told the authorities that it was Jesus who healed him. And for this reason, the Jews persecuted Jesus and sought to kill him because he had healed on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered them saying, my father has been working up until now and I've been working as well. After that statement, they sought to kill him all the more. Kill him for not only healing on the Sabbath, but for making himself an equal to God. But if God is the ultimate father figure, then why not be like God? Then Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, the Son can do nothing by himself, but only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever he does, the Son does also in like manner. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that he himself does and will show him greater works than these, so that you may marvel. 
Now Jesus goes on to speak for the next 26 verses in chapter 5. However, in verses 19 and 20, he shows us the basis of the principal phrase, like father, like son. First of all, because we are talking about the relationship between the heavenly father and his only begotten son, it elevates the relationship between an earthly father and an earthly son to a divine level. In other words, the model or the example for how a father and son ought to relate to each other are in these verses, verses 19 and 20. Jesus said, the son can do nothing on his own. Only what he sees the father doing. What the father does, the son does. The father loves the son and shows him all things, even greater works than these, so that you might be amazed. Fathers, if our model then is the relationship between God and Christ, then we must exhibit our finest qualities before our sons, before our children. But whatever we show them, that's what they will mimic, especially our sons. Jesus said, verily, I say unto you, the son can do nothing by himself. Only what he sees the father doing. And so fathers, we, we must be careful. We must be careful what our sons, what our children see us do. Careful of what our sons, of what our children hear us say. Jesus said, the son can do nothing by himself but what he sees the father do. We've got to watch what our sons see us do. Too many sons have watched their fathers in spousal abuse. Too many sons have watched their father in alcohol and drug abuse. Fathers and sons should never be drinking buddies. Too many sons have watched their fathers become deadbeat dads. Too many sons have watch their fathers leave their sons and daughters and many of them perpetuate the same behavior. Our sons need to see us at our best, our best daily, our best discipline, our best duty, our best disposition, our best deeds, our best devotion, our best demonstration, our best dedication and our best desires, our best determination and our best development, our best decency and our best dignity, the best dynamism that we have and the best discernment because what they see in us, they will think that that's what it means to be a man. Don't act out of character before your sons. Don't fly off the handle before your sons. Don't lose your composure before your sons, lest they think that's what it means to be a man. Jesus says the son can do nothing but what he sees the father do. Jesus healed the man who had sat by the pool of Bethesda for 38 years. It was something that God the Father would have done. But the authorities had issues with him. Earlier in verse 17, Jesus says, My father has been working up until now, and I have been working too. A father ought to have a work ethic that is admirable 
to the Son. God had a work ethic. We see it plainly in the creation story, Genesis chapter 1. And the good work ethic initiated at an early age with our sons teaches them the responsibility and the appreciation of being responsible. A good work ethic teaches leadership. It teaches commitment. And these are essentials for acquiring a balanced life for a man. When a son doesn't learn a work ethic from his father, he will be found wanting and a man dependent upon others to fulfill his needs. Jesus said, up until now, my father has been working and so I have as well, like father, like son. In other words, there is no day that God is not working. You call it Sabbath, whatever you want, whatever laws you set forth, to stop work. God is still working. And so is God's son. Like father, like son. In chapter 8 of John, Jesus, after forgiving the woman caught in adultery, gets into a debate with the Pharisees. He says in verse 38, What I say, I have seen in the father's presence. As for you, you should do what you have heard from the Father. They answered Jesus saying, Abraham is our father. And Jesus responds, well, if Abraham were your father, you would be doing what Abraham did. You are trying to kill somebody who has told you the truth from God. Abraham would not have done that. And in verse 44, Jesus tells them, you are indeed from your father, the devil, and you choose to do your father's will. The devil is your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks according to his own nature. For he is a liar and the father of lies. In chapter 10, after Jesus had healed a blind man with an application of dirt and spit, the Pharisees threw the man out of the temple for confessing Christ as the one who healed him. Jesus tells them that he is the good shepherd. And as a sheep knows the shepherd, he knows the father, and the father knows him. In verse 30, he says, I am, I and the father are one. In verse 38, he says, I am in the father, and the father is in me, like father, like son. Now, what Jesus does in these few statements is unusual but speaks volumes. Jesus, the son, boasts of being like his father, but also brags about his father. How often do we see that? When the son brags about his father, he does this by his many references to his father. John 14 and 2 said, In my father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. John 14 and 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You want to get to the father? Come by me. John 15 and 16, Jesus says, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you shall go forth and bear fruit and whatsoever you ask of the father in my name he will give to you 
A son ought to have something good to say about his father. A son ought to have confidence in what he has seen in his father. A son ought not hesitate to refer his father to his friends. Paul writes in Philippians 2, 5, and 6, Let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal to God, like father, like son. So if Jesus and the father are one, if what, what's in God is in Jesus, if when you see Jesus, you see God, then everything that Jesus did was the activity of God. He was just being like his father. And what I'm trying to tell you this morning is this, that whenever Jesus said something, God was talking. And wherever Jesus traveled, God was going. And whatever house Jesus went into, God was present. And whoever Jesus healed, God was touching them. And whatever Jesus condemned was cursed in glory. And whatever Jesus bound on earth was bound in heaven. Whoever Jesus loved was a friend of God. And whatever Jesus suffered, God felt. Jesus' presence in the world was the presence of God in the world. Jesus is the manifested image of God in the world. Oh, there, there is something to be said about when a son images his father in his behavior, the good qualities of the one he calls father. For it attests to the fact that the father has done a great job in teaching his son. It proves that critical time has been spent between a father and his son. It proves that the influence of a father has been a strong enough presence with the son that the son would not be drawn to a will that opposes the instructions of his father. Jesus is the son. God is the father. Jesus the son speaks of his father. Jesus the son does the works of the father. And the relationship not only sets the paradigm or model of what the earthly relationship ought be between father and son, but is extended to all who believe. For whosoever believed upon his name gave he the power to become children of God even to those who call upon his name. Jesus, who now sits at the right hand of the Father, is honored by the Father. He's honored by the Father for where he sits now, but even before that, he was honored by the Father at his baptism. When God the Father said, This is my Son, whom I am well pleased. Fathers, 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 when your sons hear others say, he acts just like his father. Is it a compliment or a complaint? Is it a good comparison or criticism? How is your son measured by how people measure you? And how do we as fathers measure ourselves as our sons measure us up and measure up to us? If we conclude, that the relationship between father and son is like father, like son. Then we as fathers 
have mimicked God. And that's a good thing for our sons to imitate. Happy Father's Day. Make it a great one. Make it a great one. Y'all do something for your fathers. If your father's no longer in the world, but in eternity, have a moment of private visitation in the spirit or go to where they are uh, buried and stand there and take a moment. But for those fathers who are still in the world, for all you who have fathers, make, uh, make it a great day for them. Blessings and peace be unto you, and we will see you next Sunday. God bless you.
My motivation. 